hope you're having a wonderful day today. If you know it, say it with me. Today, I've got my water bottle. I got my Bible. Of course, I have all of you. Today is National Mince Meat Day. And I honestly don't know what that is. And I could have looked it up on Google, but I, I couldn't be bothered to do it today. I don't know why. So I want you to let me know in the comments below, what is mince meat and is it your thing? I'm assuming that it's not a slang or it's just like a type of uh, meat. So just happy mince meat day. Someone let me know what in the world it is. So if I need to issue an apology, <laughs> we'll see. Welcome to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And if you're just not joining us, what we're doing, going through God's Word every day, pulling out a piece of hope in five minutes or less, just to maybe brighten your day just a little bit and remind you that God has not changed His mind about you. Today we're going to look at a chapter that needs a little explanation. Now, I want to read you the scripture and I want to tell you what's going on. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Now, what was going on is Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and the church at Corinth has all kinds of issues. I mean, they, they, uh, a lot of uh, scholars and historians think that Paul actually wrote four letters to the Corinthian church to survive to today. And in this particular book, he's just writing all about the stuff they're doing wrong. I mean, everything from just the way they're doing church and just, just all this stuff. Well, he gets to this chapter and he's upset because what the early church would do, at least weekly, some think daily, according to Acts chapter 2 and 3, they would receive communion. And if you have any church background, what communion is, is it is an, a time when Jesus was uh, having the last meal he's going to have with his disciples before he's arrested. And he takes some bread and he breaks it. And it was unleavened bread because it was the time of Passover. And he says, when you eat this, do this as a symbol of my body. Now, Catholic people believe that when you receive the communion, it becomes literally the human body. We don't believe that um, in our church, we, but we do believe it is a powerful symbol of the sacrifice that Jesus gave. And then he took uh, a cup of wine, or grape juice in our church, and he passed it around. And he said, when you drink this, it's a symbol of my blood. Once again, Catholic people believe the Eucharist it literally turns into blood. We believe it is a powerful symbol of what Jesus did. And what Jesus was saying is that when you take what I'm going to do in and make it a part of yourself, that's where salvation is. It was a powerful, powerful thing. Well, what was happening in the early church is that they were using this as an opportunity to have a feast, throw a party, eat all the bread, get drunk on all the wine, and just yay. And what Paul's saying is, hey, hey man, have a, have a feast, have dinner, but that's not what this is for. This is not a meal. This is worship. This is not a process, this is not a thing, it's not a system, it's worship. And so he was telling them, if you're gonna, if you're hungry, eat before you get here. This is worship. And so what it reminds me of is he said, every time you do this, you're announcing what Jesus did for you, and you're saying that it's still gonna be enough every time that you need it. And the reason why I love communion so much is it reminds me that Jesus died for my sins. Now, I love that he didn't stay dead. He rose again, but he died for my sins and he rose again. And it doesn't matter who you are. Anyone can take uh, communion. Anyone can receive communion. I've, I've done it all kinds of ways. There were times when all I had was like a, a cracker, a saltine cracker and grape juice. Uh, there was one time we had a, we had a goldfish and grape juice, like, uh, like soda. And uh, one time, all I had was Cheez-Its and a diet out of pepper. <laughs> and so I know that wasn't like the most holy way of doing it, but it's all I had, right? And I wanted to worship God. And so I remember taking that cheese it and going, Jesus, I know this is not what it looked like when you did it. <laughs> and God, this diet out of pepper don't taste anything like grape juice. But I'm doing this as a symbol of worship. And so what matters is not what it is as much as where your heart is. So it's an act of worship. So I want to encourage you, maybe over the next day or two, grab yourself some bread, grab yourself some juice, or the closest proximity you can, and receive it. And when you do, remember that what Jesus did 2,000 years ago is just as real as what you're doing, and it still works today. Jesus' blood can still forgive all of your sins. And I don't know about you, but that brings me a lot of hope. I don't know how it's going to speak to you. i tell you what I do know, and that is that God loves you more than you realize. He's for you more than you can imagine. You're probably doing better than you realize. Come on, say it with me. You know why? You got up one more day. God has not changed his mind about you. If nobody's told you yet today, I love you so much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.
on Daily Hope.